Marcus Conti reporting on this hot day in Brooklyn, New York, 95 degrees here in Brooklyn, in the midst of July, the dead of the summer. So I want to keep advancing the ball on the Jeffrey Epstein uh, case. I mean, look, we're living, we're living at a time where we have the pro- probably the most famous, uh, most prolific serial rapist in, uh, in, in our history. Serial pedophile. I'm not, I'm not so sure about serial rapist, but certainly a serial pedophile. And I think the mystery is always, let's look at the person, right? Let's look at how did this guy evolve to the monster that he became, right? So here he is. He's sitting in jail, right? I'm going to look at all of his, all of his stuff. So he's born in 1953. Follow the money. Follow the money. I know everybody thinks, oh, there's, a, there's going to be a ton of conspiracy theories out there. You've got guys already talking about how the plane was flying to different countries and weapons were going one way and girls were going the other way. And, and it was you know, just, just easy. Slow down. Slow down with the conspiracy theories. Let's get, let's get it right. <laughs> let's get the theory right about who this guy is and put the pieces together. Because, again, we may never know the full story because we're just peons and, and the, 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 you know, the money brokers are going to uh, broker a deal to see what information gets out. So we try to leak out. We try to investigate as much as we can about this and know as much about the the character as possible. So allegedly ties to Mossad. I hate that word. He's a Mossad agent. He's a CIA Mossad. He's protected. Well, let's find out. He's definitely Jewish. That's for for damn sure. Uh, So let's... um, Let's start from the beginning. Jeffrey Epstein was born in 1953 in a gated community right here in Brooklyn. You know where I am, right? I'm right here. and You see me walking on by the bridge. This is my favorite park over here, right? You see me walking on Shore Road Park all the time, right by the bridge. And right over here, just a couple of miles away, is Seagate. Right? Now, here's Coney Island, Luna Park, right? Here's where all, you know, here's where all the shit, shit happens, right? This is the... The ball field and uh, Surf Avenue, and here's the Wonder Wheel. Here's Coney Island Boardwalk, the beach, Nathan's, right? So that's where you are, right? But right over here is this other gated Jewish community, predominantly Jewish community, right, called Seagate. And it is, in fact, gated. There's the gate. Right? And that's geographically where it is. You see the... Uh, the landmark, the, this, is, this, so this is Seagate over here. See this piece of flattened uh, one, you know, one, I guess, one family homes in there. I've never been inside, but I've been on the beach and I have walked. I've walked the beach from here through the private areas to the uh, public areas all the, way around to the, all the way around the shore and seen the lighthouse. The lighthouse is right here. Uh, lighthouse is actually right on the tip over here. So what's so important about this? It just is interesting that the guy spent his, uh, until age 16, he, uh, well, actually he lived there longer. He lived there into the, the 1970s. He attended Cooper Union, NYU, math school. He graduated from uh, Lafayette High School. So let, let's just take a look, you know, so we go into, I'll just show you the gate, right? You already saw the gate, but let's look again. A gated community, right? He lived in there with, you know, with all the, you know, with with all his fellow Jews, right? Is that is that fair to say? I right, see all this. This is where they keep all the blacks, right? In in Coney Island, these are the projects. I'll show you the projects. See the projects? These are all low income housing, right? Project, 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 projects, right? All projects. These are all. Actually, Trump funded projects. Trump had something to do with that uh, the funding of these things back in the day, but that's neither here nor there. These are all housing projects, minority mostly. Right? You go down here, you've got you've got the uh, this is uh, Brighton. It's mostly a Russian, uh, very rather affluent area, um, Russian spoken on the street. So there you go. You've got Seagate over here. Go back down. Jewish Community Council of Greater, the Greater Jew Center right here. Here's where all the, you know, the, it's, a, it's kind of a Jew beach over here. <laughs> uh, this is Jew beach. This is where the, this is Coney Island and there's Jew beach. 
just for just a funny funny note, you see on the end of this pier right here, this is actually where uh, Woody Guthrie lived in Coney Island. The guy who wrote uh, "This Land Is Your Land," "This Land Is My Land," lived right here on Mermaid Avenue somewhere, right around here. And when he died, he his kids didn't know what to do with his ashes, so they literally walked to the end of this pier right here. And threw the canister of ashes into the water. <laughs> so Woody Guthrie is literally buried <clears throat> in the water in Coney Island. Just a just a little side note. Uh, so so anyway, so so there's the gated Jewish community of uh, of of Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, gated community. Get out of the way. It won't let you inside though, but you can see the gate. See the gate right there? There's the uh, gated community. That mermaid spa. Oh, no, no, that's actually a mermaid. That's something different. I've been in there. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's a steam room in a, 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 a Svitz. Right. So you go all the way down to the end of the beach here, and then you, you're, you're at another area, right? So this is where I've, I've walked. I've walked in here, right? It's this private beach, and you can walk all the way around to to uh, here, right? So you're basically right over here somewhere. And you can walk all the way around. So he lives in this little gated community. Why is it important? Because it's just the, it's the, it's the, the, the separatist br upbringing that he had, right? Jewish parents, Jewish upbringing. He, in fact, went to, um, he went to Lafayette High School, which is, which is over here. Right? So here's where he grew up. Right? Here's where he, he grew up in Seagate. And then he went to high school with the regular people over here at Lafayette High School in Brooklyn. If I still lived in Brooklyn at the time when I was when I where I grew up, I probably would have went to Lafayette High School. So uh here's Lafayette High School for whatever it's worth, right? Uh, it's a decent public high school, right? He went he, he didn't grow up he didn't grow up in private schools. He did grow up in a private uh community. So so here's where it kind of gets more interesting, right? So so you, from, from 1969 to 1971, he graduates from Lafayette High School at 16 years old, right? He's a pretty smart kid, right? He got out of high school at 16, and he went on to Cooper Union, which is also in downtown Manhattan. I can show you what that is. Right? He's, he's, um, he then goes on to, to, you know, to, be, to go to school in the village. Oh, he's such a, such a cool Washington Square Park over here. I think Union Square is probably right over. Where is Union Square on Eighth Street? Where's Bleecker Eighth? Eighth Street, Astor Place. Yeah, so here's Union. Here's a uh, Cooper Union. Uh, Cooper Union's over here somewhere. Uh, actually, that's uh, well. Anyway, it's in this neighborhood, right? It's right in the. It's right in the village. And so he goes to Cooper Union. He goes to NYU. He didn't graduate from NYU. He went to NYU from 1971 to 1974 and studied math and physics. Uh, so he's a smart kid, right? And he, he moves on to, um, to teach at the Dalton School, a very uppity, preppy, preppy school on uh, East 91st Street and 5th Avenue. So rich, so famous, so all the rich kids in the area, all the billionaires send their kids there. It's a, I believe it's up to high school. So 74 to 76, he's a teacher there where he meets Alan Greenberg of Bear Stearns, the CEO for Alan Greenberg. I, you know, fucking Jewish guy, sends his kids to, the, to this uh, elite school. Epstein is teaching there. Epstein schmoozes his son and daughter. Greenberg's son and daughter go to the school. And Epstein meets Greenberg, right, the CEO for Bear Stearns, hits it off with him. And, uh, and Greenberg offers him a job where, where, where um, Epstein worked from 1976 to 1981. And he worked at Bear Stearns from 1986 to, 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 uh, to 19, to 19, 76. Well, I lost it. 1976 to 1981, he's a limited partner at Bear Stearns. So that's where he learns the ropes. He learns how to... He learns the, the talk, the money talk, right? He's already a math teacher, and he starts to learn the lingo. He's, a, he's an options trader. He's, he's, just, he's, a, he's a clog in the engine at Bear Stearns, right? Very, very affluent uh, 
organization. So that's his pivot out of teaching. He, he taught in a, in a very elite school in the Upper East Side, and he pivots to Bear Stearns, where he meets Alan Greenberg and now others. So, so from 1981, he, he's a limited partner, and then in 1981, he has a falling out with Bear Stearns, and he starts his own company, IAG, Financial Consultant, International uh, Inter- Intercontinental Asset Group. Uh, this is some bullshit name, right? He's got so he gets his own company going, right? And then um, and he runs that that charade for a while from nineteen to nineteen eighty seven. He creates a group called the Tower Financial. It gets interesting, right? Well, where is the connection? Where 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 are we going to point to? Mossad. See, we already know Jeffrey Epstein is a pedophile. We know that there's indisputable evidence that suggests that, right? That that there's not he's not going to get out on. He's not going to get away from those charges. The, the game is, where did he get the money and who else is connected to the, to the operation, to, the, to the, you know, the using young women as tools or, or, or as ornaments or just for their own, you know, their own pleasure. Right? That's the real, the real story. Where did he get the money? Did he compromise billionaires? To what degree did he compromise billionaires? And of course... Who are those billionaires, right? That's really what we want to know. So, so we try to try, you know, you follow the money and you try to, you try to track it back, right? So in 1987, he forms this, um, the Tower Financial. Actually, he, didn't, he became a consultant at Tower Financial under another Habib, Steve Hoffenberg. So, so far you've got Alan Greenberg, now Steve Hoffenberg, right? And in 1993, Tower implodes they rip off four hundred and fifty million dollars from investors in what was widely at the time thought to be one of the biggest Ponzi schemes in on Wall Street. So he has a history of 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 shady deals, of bait and switch operations, of Ponzi schemes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give us your money. They put in the money. They take the money, put it in their pocket. Tell the investors, yeah, you screwed, right? And then they 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 uh, dissolve the corporation. So that was that was Tower. Right? And then in 1988, he starts this other thing, J.P. Uh, J. Epstein and Company. And this is where it's really interesting. He, he only, it's an asset management organization for clients with greater than $1 billion in net worth. Right? $1 billion in net worth. So he's already doing this in 1988 while he's sinking tower all through 1993. Right? So he's got this underlying asset management thing going on. That could be where he started to compromise billionaires. We don't know yet. In 1996, he renames it to Financial Trust Company and moved the operation to St. Thomas on Lolita Island. Uh, so all of these names that I'm throwing out there are going to start to become relevant as the court documents start to come out, 2,000 sealed documents, as his finances start to unravel, as the courts start to seize his properties, you start to follow the money trail. But this is what we know so far. This is the documented, you know, stuff that we know so far. Right? So, so he, his main client is Leslie Wexner, right, um, in this billion-dollar scam, this billion-dollar asset manage, billionaire asset management organization. And uh, Wexner is from Victoria's Secret. Right? So he's got some big clients already. 96, he renames it to a uh, financial trust company, moves to St. Thomas. 2000 to 2007, uh, liquidate, liquid funding. Liquid funding? Uh, 40, oh, right. He, I don't know, some other organization. Liquid funding, which is owned by, um, by Bear Stearns. 40% of the assets are owned by Bear Stearns. And that collapses because Bear Stearns collapsed in 2008. All right, so other other notable, um, and then I'll sum it up. Right, I know this is it's kind of boring, it's kind of dry, but this is what you got to do. Right, you got to look at the at the evidence and then start to connect the dots, not just wild, wild grasping accusations of you know, you know, word salad and and convoluted <laughs> conspiracy theories. But what actually happened? Is there a connection to Mossad? I don't know. In 2015, this could be your, your Mossad thing, but it happens much later. In 2015, Epstein is, a star, is, is in a startup 
headed by former Israeli Prime Minister U Idu, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, E H U D, Idu Barak. He's the former Prime Minister of um, Israel. And Epstein's attorney, Gerald Lefcourt, said Epstein was part of the original group that conceived the Clinton Global Initiative. Pow. So that, that is a connection. But again, it's very late in the game. It's already 2015. I had all the real smut and nastiness and, and connections probably happened in the late 80s, early 90s. Right? And then right well into uh, 2000. Right? So, so that's a lot there. That's just, just, just data. Just dropping you know, the, the details on the table. Try to find out. Um, you know, as, as this uh, thing unfolds, how does a kid from Brooklyn, a little Jewish kid from Seagate, you know, Coney Island, he walks through, the, you know, probably walks through the black neighborhood, gets his ass kicked. They're lucky if they could get over to Nathan's for a hot dog without getting their asses kicked. The Jewish boys running back behind the fence, hiding, you know, that kind of shit, right? That's the kind of upbringing he had. He goes to Lafayette. He's Lafayette High School with real people. He's out of place. Probably gets his catches beatings on a daily basis. He's probably a little smarter than everybody else because he studied or whatever. He's got the Jew gene, you know, <laughs> who knows, right? And, um, and then he, he makes his way up through Bear Stearns and then he teaches and he uses that as a pivot and he starts to meet and greet people, right? And then at some point, when does he start to compromise the billionaires? Because that's really what I want to know. Whether he's, of course, he's a pedophile. We already know that shit, right? There's no, there's no doubt about it. He deserves no mercy whatsoever, man. He's sitting in that jail cell right now, rotten, sweating. Ah, fuck him, man. Who cares, right? But we want to know we, we, what, we wanna, we, what we want to come out of this thing, right? What we want to come out of this thing is we want to know what he knows, right? Who, does he, who did he compromise? To what degree can these billionaires be bought and, and, and uh, you know, and blackmailed? Isn't that the interesting story? What did Bill Clinton really screw teenage girls on a plane high above the high above the clouds? Uh, now the other part of it will probably come out is that this plane probably went from Indonesia to Thailand, from Thailand to the Philippines to China. Right, it flew all over the place. Right, again, age of consent is thirteen. Right, so if there's a bunch of Thai girls, you know, that had consent. Sexual are, are within their, you know, sexual, they have, they're, they're within the, the uh, legal age of consent in their home countries are on this plane flying around, right? They're not necessarily, and they probably have, you know, parental um, uh, uh, permission to do it. Because in some, in third world countries, you know, parents would gladly sell their kids into that shit uh, for a couple of dollars, right? And that's just a sad reality. So, what I'm saying is that a lot of the crimes that could have been committed in other countries, Africa, in China, wherever the fuck they were flying around doing this thing, isn't really, we don't have jurisdiction over that, is what I'm trying to say. If a plane is in international airspace and none of the, none of the, the, the parties involved are American citizens, we don't have any jurisdiction. That would be for, for example, if they're Thai kids, uh, you, know, you know, Thai girls, then there would be a, an issue for Thailand where the age of consent is 13 and the parents gave them permission to be on the damn plane and made, to them, that was a better life than starving in the, uh, you know, in, in, as a peasant. Right? So, so that's, not, that's not as interesting, right? As, that's not that in, as interesting as how many American or international billionaires did he compromise with video? And where is that trove of video? Will we ever see the actual material, if at all, if he did compromise billionaires, will we ever see that trove of material? I think is, is you know, is, is most interesting, uh, is most interesting as he sits there contemplating his never getting out of freaking jail. Right? He's, he's not going to get out, right? And now is he going to bargain for, maybe, maybe they'll say, okay, well, you're 66, you'll spend 10 years, you'll get out at 76 if you stay in good health, maybe you'll have, you know, 10 years of freedom, uh, maybe that's his, his thought. And, and what are you going to give us, uh, Jeffrey? What are you going to give us for, for that, right? Now, if, if the FBI and the CIA and whoever is investigating this case finds that trove of material, that compromising material, 
Well, then Epstein is clearly disposable, right? Who cares about Epstein? They got the, they got the goods. Right? Now, if Epstein was slick and was able to, I know some people have proposed this, that Epstein has the material uh, in a dead man kind of you know, thing where, where if, if nobody chirps into this account, it, it's simultaneously the evidence, the actual maybe the child porn, pornography, the compromised videos, then leaks to media or leaks to uh, intelligence agencies or just leaks overall to everybody, right? Did Epstein set up a dead man release of some sort? We don't know. I mean, there's no evidence of that. That's just, uh, that's just pure speculation at this point, unless somebody has any evidence that that's the case. So, uh, you know, there's food for thought on this very hot day on uh, Jeff- Jeffrey Epstein case. You know, we keep following it, right? I can go over to Seagate and give you a better view of what it was like growing up in a little Jewish community and going to Lafayette High School here in Brooklyn. He's a Brooklyn kid, right? He's a Brooklyn kid that went, you know, he's a New Yorker. And uh, it is fascinating. It, it makes sense that Trump would immediately hit him off, hit it off with, with Epstein because they're both New Yorkers. So that's not really, I mean, I think, I, I think Trump is doing an excellent job at fending off and defining, defining who Jeffrey Epstein is and what his relationship if any, with him was, which was, you know, just a guy at a, that owned a resort. And here's a, you know, a rich kid, come, a rich guy coming along, spending some money. That's really all that relationship really amounts to, I, I, in my view so far. I, was, Epst- was Donald Trump up on a plane screwing teenagers? I, I don't think so, you know. Was Bill Clinton up on a plane screwing teenagers? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I would speculate, yeah. So we're going to, I hope we find out. I hope we find out all that stuff. So use the thread, you know, if there's anything more, keep the discussion going. It's a, it's an open discussion, right? Because the mainstream media is not going to help us figure this out. We have to sift through the evidence as it comes out and, and make up our own mind. And, you know, try not to, I mean, for me, I'm trying not to, to lock into established conspiracy theories about his connection to Mossad. Right? Every, every Jew is Mossad. I, I got bad news for you. You know, every, every fucking Jew in New York is a Mossad agent, right? It's fucking, yeah. Let's see. Uh, you know, like, you look, you see some of the, some of the imagery. I'll show you some imagery here. Right? It's fucking... All right, here's, here's, here's the, uh, I mean, this is, Jew, this is Jewish, <laughs> Jewish Mossad, right? It's fucking, here's Habib and, the, the, you know, there's tons of Hasidic Jews all over, all over this community, right? And they're all connected in some, you know, some crazy ass way back to, you know, back to, uh, they're all connected in some way to each other and to Israel. So to jump to the conclusion that they're, they're somehow connected to Israeli intelligence or Israeli military, well, yeah, they are because they're, they're Jews, right, with a love of Israel. Right? And that's, that's just, that's separatism in my view. That's always, you know, been the case, right? And, uh, is it the Jewish religion? No, I think it's more like the, the Jewish cult or the Jewish... It's more, a better term is the Jewish mafia. Uh, now, again, people are going to watch this and say, oh, Conti's is an anti-Semite. No, nah, just pointing out the facts. That's all we're doing here. We're just pointing out the facts. Marcus Conti reporting. 